So here's the taper collar. Now I, I may leave up the old version of how to create a taper collar with with NX11, but that doesn't really help you if you have NX13. So I'm going to do the taper collar on NX13 once, uh, just in case you need it. I've already talked about well, and explain the dimensions and things on it, so go to that video if you need more information on, on how it's built. But I'm going to build this one by creating the, by creating the base, uh, the sketch of the base, and then the sketch of what would be I would revolve to create the top uh, cone shape here. And then I'm going to intersect the two shapes, the two extrusions to get a final cut, a uh, final model. It's probably not the easiest way to do it. Probably the easiest way to is to create a sketch of the bottom face and extrude that up for the plate and then do a circle for the cylinder here, for the base of the cylinder, and then do a revolve of like a triangle shape to get the top. And then to cut the holes out, the easiest way is probably make five concentric circles on the very bottom of the part and then extrude them up okay, at different distances. That's probably the easiest way without making mistakes. But I'm going to do it a little bit differently because I want to show you the power of the intersect command. So let's do a sketch first. Uh, extrude of the base of that. So, And this is in inches. So I'm going to pick the base here, and I'm going to draw, uh, the, this, the hole here is concentric about the arc. So let's see, to get this correct, let's see, that hole is uh, one inch diameter. So let's do a circle, and I'm going to one inch. There's a one inch diameter. And there's a one inch diameter. And then I'm going to do a two inch diameter arc. If I can get it on there, let's zoom in. Looks like I put two of them on top of it. Okay, I'm going to back up. two on top one other. Let's do a circle at arc center. Two inch. There we go. There's our two inch. And then over here also. Radius 3.75. So, three point seven five times two. Then add some lines. Okay, it's snapping to the arc center. I don't want it to snap to the arc center, so I'm going to turn off the center point snap and go from there to here. Go from here to here. And so on and so forth. That's making them tangent automatically. Trim. Let's go from center to here. Uh, they say this is 10 
inches across. Let's try to get from here to arc center. So 10 inches across and then half of that distance would be 5. And the same on the other side. If your dimensions are in the way, it's going to try and grab all of them. I think I might have... Do I have two circles on there? I'm going to try and delete one circle. Yes, I had two. Notice there was two dimensions, so there was two circles. Okay, let's put a dimension in now. From here. Sometimes you find yourself caught in a in another command. So you just hit the escape key a couple times. There, now those should be constrained to that center line because that's where I created them. It says fully defined, so uh, more trims. Trim this and this, right? And finish it. And the thickness is point no 1.5 tall let's go back into the sketch now okay so from here I go over down over. that hole is supposed to go all the way up through so let's extend this line and trim off these lines let's put some dimensions in so I want to make sure that this thing is bigger than the bottom base. So it would have to be over 6 inches long from here. So I've got both sketches created. Now I'm going to revolve one, this one, about the center vector. 360 degrees, say OK, and that has everything except the base on there. We're going to extrude the second sketch, highlight it, and I want to go from zero all the way up past there, and I want to intersect, intersect. Tool body completely outside target body. Select the body. There we go. You gotta tell it what to go through. And then, okay. And then there's a way to make a, like an artificial uh, section view through here. Menu, view, section. New section? Yeah, okay. And then you can click and rotate this 90 degrees. So this helps you if you need to work inside a part. Okay, and you can't see inside it. I mean, you could right click and go invisible or dim edges. And sometimes that helps you look inside a part, but that's kind of hard to work with. Click, solid edges. But if you need to open a part up so you can work on the inside, create sketches or whatever. So let's go back to extrude. Did I do, did? Yeah. So let's go back to extrude. Pick that. You go up through the top. You got to go all the way up through because remember extrude. Um, whatever is in common to both sketches, both solids, that's what it keeps. So if you don't go all the way up through, you're going to cut it off there. So go all the way through it, intersect. And there you go. And to hide, um, to hide sketch lines, you can click on the little eyeball there. 
and if you want to hide the uh, the datum plane you can also click on that so if you want to print out of this thing now these edge lines are not real okay they're like a cartoon character so to make it look more real you go up here to shaded click right click and then move up here and that's what the part looks like the edge lines on makes it a little bit easier for you to find surfaces and things like that.